Well, Patriot Nurse put up a video on what motivated you to become a prepper. And I'm, I would say basically people have little fears that they keep inside. And I think motivation for becoming a prepper is mostly fear. Fear of the unknown, what's uncertain. Years ago, this this came out back in 1976. Let me let me turn this just a minute, and I'll get the. Guns and Ammo, December 1976. And this fella here, Mr. Tappan, he decided he was going to. He wrote a book. Yeah, I'll have to unzoom this just a little bit. He, he wrote in here, he says that almost 90% of the American people live in cities. Their food and clothing come from the labors of others. Various forms of energy are processed and delivered to the homes by others. The shelter they live in was probably built by others. It is protected by fire by others and from intrusion, more or less, by others. Because of this common interdependence, at this complex civilization, we have uh, tended to lose sight how vulnerable we really are, how unable we are through our own direct efforts to provide the core necessities which we require to support our own lives. Without really being aware of it, most of us have subcontracted almost all of our life support activities to other people, corporations, government bodies, and machines. Not only does this circumstance contribute to the sense of frustration of modern men, it's life-threatening should there be an interruption of any of these vital services. So what would you do, say, a, next, a week from next Wednesday? There's no gasoline at the pumps, no food in the supermarkets, no electric power or city water, the banks were all closed, and a mob had formed into the center of town, looting and burning out of frustration and fear. Could your family survive for even a few weeks where you are without additional food and water and perhaps without little or no police or fire protection at all? That's the kind of stuff that made you think. Because everything that we do anymore, it's not, we're not back on the farms where our forefathers were, you know, raising crops, raising chickens and cows and pigs and all that stuff and your wife canning and, and cooking and all the good stuff. It's not that way anymore. Nobody has the skills. You know, you don't see a woman out back uh, making bars of lye soap. No, everything, it comes from a store. Nobody knows how to do anything anymore because they lost the skills. Another thing that people talk about fear, motivation, they say that you're a... Um, a prepper. Now before the, the people were called preppers, they were called survivalists. Especially in the 80s, uh, from, from, the mid, from the mid 1970s onward, you were survivalists and by the 90s they were so, they turned it to preppers, so it didn't sound so uh, drastic. Now this is 1984. I'm going to zoom this in so you can see this date. October 1984 Survival Guide. And what he says here, I want to zoom, get this zoomed in. In Arkansas, Bill Clinton is calling for computerized listing of the names and whereabouts of all known survivalists as these people may pose a threat to his state. Big Brother's computer, and all the media will lump us in, urban and rural, educated and dropout, mad, man, insane, male and female, religious, scientists, white collar, blue collar, all of us who are concerned about our futures inside their data banks under the heading of survivalists. The word, very word has become across the land, land to mean murderer. This is a smear, undeserved and painful, 
and on every steady, self-reliant citizen. Now, people, what, what happened is they don't want you to be able to take care of yourself. That's the whole thing. They want you to be dependent. They don't want you, they want you to count on them for everything. That's why they don't, they don't want you to, to be able to think for yourself. That's why they're starting this thing up about uh, uh, universal basic income. Start to wake up, people. Learn some skills. I'm telling you, you're going to need it. You can't count on the government. Back in the 70s and 80s, people realized you couldn't count on the government. I mean, we could have something. We could have a world food shortage famine because of, of, of one of the crops going bad. Think about that. Jeez. I mean, uh, ever increasing number of prominent scientists who believe that we may be on the verge of a worldwide famine because of changing climate conditions and the development of hybrid crop strains which depend heavily on petroleum-based fertilizers or pesticides and our ever increasing reliance upon fewer and fewer food varieties. Four crops, wheat, rice, maize, and potatoes contribute more tonnage to the world food supplies than the other 26 crops combined. And a failure in any one of them can mean starvation for millions and millions of people. So, it's just something you better think about, people. I mean, this guy wrote a whole mess of stuff. You know, talking about survival retreat. Where will you survive? Scanners. Stay in touch with things. Storable foods. That's Mountain House. More foods. More foods. Guns. See, that's why they hate they hate preppers because preppers have firearms to protect what they have. And they don't want that because then they lose control. They will they will label you anything to get their point across. You're not a murderer. You're somebody who goes, well, you know, Things aren't good. I, I know it in my gut, and I'm going to get some food. If I have to can it myself, I'll learn how. But anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because she wanted to know why people um, what was their motivation for becoming a prepper. And it's fear. Fear of the unknown. That's what prompts you to do things. It, it, it jump starts your brain, is what it does. That's what it does. And so much going on, and everybody's afraid of uh, the nitwits we got in power right now. And you don't know what's going to happen. But you better stick together, and you better not give up a thing. Thanks for watching.